Hello again. I'm uh, adjusting my pants. I'm, uh, I'm your host, Jesse Morgan, from the Black Metal Rebellion. Um, today is uh, probably the same day that you're watching the, uh, the last video, which was the small random CD update. But uh, I'm back really quickly just to kind of do this horror movie update and to kind of give you my thoughts on each one. All right, first up, let's just fucking get into this, shall we? Ah! Ooh, bones, they're so brittle. Oh, ah. Calcium, need more of that shit. Wow, I was not expecting that to hurt as much. Anyways, whoo. Ah, this, motherfuckers, is amazing. This is VHS 2. And uh, you don't need to see the first one, because honestly, it's not the greatest. This one, though, this is a fucking blast. Um, pretty much, this personal investigator guy, it starts off with him trying to catch this dude cheating on his wife, and then they, he has a, par a female partner, and then going to this one house... And they start checking through a bunch of VHS tapes and kind of seeing what they can use inside it for evidence for his case to help get him paid, I guess. And they end up discovering a whole whack of really freaky deaky Dutch shit, okay? Uh, there's some zombie shit that's going on in this from a first-person view. Um, there is a weird alien encounter thing that happens in this that's pretty freaky and there's also the like weird cult that is summoning some sort of ancient demon and they follow each of the three or four stories throughout and uh it's 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 messed up there's some scenes you're like whoa and eek and uh, lots of blood and gore. So what uh, what else do you need? There's also some humor in it. It's kind of just kind of like tongue-in-cheek humor. You're like, ah, aha, I get it. That's funny. But yes, definitely recommend checking out VHS 2 if you have not. The third one's all right. I don't think we own that. But it's not really the big deal. The big movie in the VHS series is this, this one for sure. The first one, it's okay. But they're, they're kind of just kind of getting... They're just kind of spreading their wings and trying to figure out what to do film-wise, I think, in the first one. And the third one is just fucking weird. It doesn't really follow any... I don't know. It just didn't quite make any sense to me. Things happened. I, I got it. I got what was happening while it was happening. But just the overall story it, from start to finish, I'm just kind of like, huh? Maybe I'm just an idiot, but... VHS 2. Excellent. 4.5 out of 10. Um, now all these, I got the Curtis Flea Market uh, a couple weeks back. I just haven't had time to really film some horror stuff. But, uh, yeah. Next one. This one's Outpost. Uh, Rise of the Spetsnaz. Don't know what that means, but, uh, basically this is a post-apocalyptic sort of World War II-ish type movie. Where it's the Russians versus the German Nazis. And somewhere in the middle of this, they learn how to create kind of super soldier-esque zombie undead people. And then they unleash it amongst their enemies. Like the, the Germans, the Nazis kind of find this out. How to do this. And they start unleashing the uh, undead people against their enemies. The Russians in this. And... It's, it's interesting. It doesn't really have too much of a story. You don't really get to find out a whole lot of how they figured out how to do this or why they're doing it or what actual time era this is supposed to be taking place in. Like I said, it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic slash World War II era, it felt to me. It's basically just a action film with some zombie gore and some kind of hyper-natural stuff. That's kind of like, eh. It's, uh, it, was, it was interesting. I'm glad to have it in the collection. I probably 
won't watch this again for a long time though because once you've seen it you're kind of like yeah all right that's cool it's the inside by the way it's got some pretty interesting kills uh the one main russian in here is a pretty badass dude he ends up like kicking a lot of ass in this and surviving quite a long time i'm not going to give away whether he survives or doesn't survive at the end maybe he does maybe he doesn't but uh it's decent uh i'd say 2.8 out of 10 maybe a 3 out of 10 ah uh, nah i'll give it a 4 out of 10 it was it was it wasn't like terrible, but also isn't really worth watching too many more times. It wasn't too bad. Each each movie was like a like two dollars or two fifty or something. Now this next one, this is the biggest pile of shit I have ever seen in a long, long time. Like I've seen garbage indie movies that are better than this, and the only reason I got it, if you can see this, from the Director of The Boogeyman. Now, when you think of Boogeyman, you think of, uh, you know, Sam Raimi's Boogeyman and, like, the the, the Boogeyman trily trilogy that was, like, half decent. Now, this is from the guy that created the 1975 or something like that Boogeyman. Really, really old. Bullshit. Bullshit advertising right there. And... This is just garbage. This is this is Diary of a Cannibal. Make sure you never buy this. This is a, a, a negative 7 out of 10. <laughs> Worst fucking horror movie. Or or I don't even know. It's not even a horror movie. You don't even really see too much. There's like some minor blood. And it's, it's quite obviously fake. And then there's um, like a titty or two in it. Doesn't even make for a good spank bank kind of seeing to pause and you know like it it's it's not even worth it like I, I feel like i deserve to be paid to watch this pile of crap <laughs> so yeah don't ever accidentally buy this thinking it's good because of this whole from the director of the boogeyman bullshit because it's not the boogeyman you're thinking of garbage basically this girl falls in love with this guy who wants him to eat her because he's so madly in love with her and he's got obviously mental problems and she's so in love with him that she's like okay so there's like this weird scene where, where they're just like running along the beach and there's like montages and it's like just really boring scene transfers and there's like fade ins and fade outs it's like the worst you know what it, it's like if a <laughs> If a, if a nine-year-old got a hold of like a like a decent Windows Movie Maker program, decided to make his own horror movie, and just lacked any sort of substance or storyline, just just goes, I want this girl to eat this guy, and I want there to be a little bit of blood and a booby in it. <laughs> and that's about as far as any intelligence with this movie goes. So yeah, utter crap. Next. This was not 19.99 from Walmart. I actually got this for 250. This is Stonehenge Apocalypse. It's it's okay. It's it's got Misha Collins from Supernatural. You probably best know him as Cass or Castiel, the angel. Now this is probably pre Supernatural, if not before they actually used him. He's in it. It's like the only reason I got this, and I figured Stonehenge Apocalypse. It's got the title Stonehenge in it. It's got the title Apocalypse. It's got to be great. It wasn't. At all. A strong 1.4 out of 10. Like, the only r remote interest in having this is to see Misha Collins' work. And he was a decent actor in this. I'll give him that. But the effects were lame. The characters were... Or like one dimensional, the acting was absolute crap. This oh man. Basically, to sum it up, there's some sort of like pre humanity, pre human alien technology involved with Stonehenge and the pyramids around the world, and there's some sort of magnetic force that's going to eventually erupt all the volcanoes in the world and just wipe it clean like a new genesis and start the whole 
you know, life process again. And and they assume that that's what started, you know, humanity in the first place was this ancient alien technology that started kickstarted, you know, life on this planet. And now they're trying to stop it because it's reactivated again. It's going to kill everyone. So they're like, oh, we better stop this fucking bullshit. Yeah. Garbage. Definitely not worth buying. I mean, unless you're like an advanced, ad, like just a huge Misha Collins fan. There's really no point in ever seeing that movie. Next. This is Dead Mary. This was surprising surprisingly bad and surprisingly good all at the same time like the acting it is just like your usual teen kind of jump scare gory possession horror movie um it tries to be uh a mix of urban legends bloody mary with uh, the Evil Dead. Like, literally, if you mixed uh, that er the, the third Urban Legends film, Bloody Mary, with the Evil Dead film, this is basically what you'd get, but, like, a, like a lower grade. Like, there's some of it that's kind of really funny. There's some of it that's kind of really weird. There might be a booby or two in it. So there's that. And... There is actually a really genius possession in here. Like the 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 the, the fanboy producer writers of this movie must have watched Evil Dead, Evil Dead Two, Army of Darkness a million times. Like ah, uh, it's it's so bad. It's good at point at points. Like if you're a fan of Evil Dead, just honestly go buy this. If I had to give this a score without knowing about Evil Dead or anything like that, I'd probably just be like, ah, it's, it's garbage. It's a 4 out of 10. It's a 3.5 out of 10. But uh, having enjoyed Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell's work with the Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, and actually having somewhat enjoyed the Urban Legends Bloody Mary film, I'm going to have to give this like a 7 out of 10. Like, this reminded me so much of that stuff. It... I'm glad to have this in my collection, and it was definitely worth the two dollars and fifty cents from the Curtis Lee Market. If you can find this on like Pirate Bay or or like maybe it's on YouTube, you might have like a scene or two missing, or torrents.de or something. And if you can find this and watch it before you buy it, do it. It's good. But if you see this at your local local used. Uh, DVD store. If you have a flea market there that sells horror DVDs and it's there, pick it up. Especially if it's like $5 or less, you're getting your money's worth and then some. Just because of all those kind of references and kind of stylized possession things that the Evil Dead did. And and it's, and it's it is sort of like a, the Bloody Mary thing. Uh, in this movie, they claim that Dead Mary is the, the real ghost story or whatever, but they have to sell it somehow, right? Uh, there's the back. It's the inside. doesn't really, you know, have much else to show, but it was surprisingly tolerable. Like, it was, it was, it was decent. So definitely check that one out. All right, next. This is The Pyramid. I've been meaning to pick up a physical copy of this for a while. I like horror movies that revolve around... You know, minor Stonehenge apocalypse, pyramids, and ancient Egypt, and mummies, and kind of that supernatural side of things with like horror elements. This was this was kind of like the mummy meets kind of like the one Indiana Jones film meets something else that I can't quite fucking remember at the moment, but. This was this was surprisingly good. Definitely check this out. Um, pretty much, these archaeologists are un, you know, uncovering this this pyramid. They send in a drone bot. It gets fucked up. It's really expensive, so they have to recover it, or else they're not going to get their you know, two thousand dollar retainer back. So they want to get their money back. So they got to go hunt down their droid that they send in here to scout out the place. 
And then shit just starts slowly but surely becoming more and more unfortunate for them. <laughs> and and then the the the, the big ass creepy reveal at the end of what's actually in this thing. Yeah. It's it's badass. I love it. And then the, some of the ways that people die in here like brutal. Brutal. Um if you're a germaphobe, don't watch this because there's also like a, an ancient kind of germ curse that happens in this pyramid. Sorry, spoiler alert, but that's cool. I, I wanted to mention that. It's like a creature feature mixed with fucking enclosed spaces mixed with ancient Egypt lore and kind of exploration within this pyramid. And then like, it's, it's cool. You, you'll definitely want to watch the pyramid if you have not already. It also does a couple of jump scares, but then there's also some, like, legit creepy fucking scary shit in this. I mean, yeah, I'm an adult. Nothing actually scares me anymore, but some parts you're like, ooh, like, it'll, it'll get you for a second. And also, some of the producers and directors of The Hills of Eyes, so you know it's going to be pretty decent for a horror movie. 8.5 out of 10. It's It's decent. <laughs> And finally, the last one on there, Lights Out by James Wan. Fucking love James Wan as a horror movie uh, you know, producer and director and stuff like that. He's the dude that did Saw. He's the guy that did Dead Silence. He's the dude that's kind of involved with uh, um, um, Sinister and Insidious. He's the guy that did Vlog and Chain Letter. And like all that other stuff, lights out. This is great. This is kind of like Darkness Falls meets kind of the Boogeyman. Um, uh, what's that other fucking? There's 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 always this one movie that it reminds me of too that I can't quite think of. But it's it's good. There's some like, there's some backstory that needs to be unfolded in here to kind of figure out why something's happening. Uh, I think they could have revealed a little bit more. I, I'd like there to be like a prequel slash sequel, like something that delves more into the like the main evil character that's in this, into the past of how that became, and maybe like the events that led up to it, and then maybe some like post events because there's two endings to this. And the way they ended it, that the final ending leaves it open for a sequel. The 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 second ending that they put in here, uh, that's actually a bonus that you can watch later, kind of shuts that down and doesn't like really leave it open for a sequel because it looks like they beat the villain permanently in the second ending. Which I'm kind of glad they didn't do that because I like how it opens up for another one. I would definitely watch that. Definitely check out Lights Out. It's Creepy if you're, you know, like afraid of that whole supernatural evil character in the dark waiting to get you and you're not quite sure what it is or why it's coming after you or how to stop it kind of thing. And if you're a fan of James Wan and Twisted Pictures and all that shit, definitely check this out. Another 8.5 out of 10 for like the supernatural horror series, supernatural horror movies, and stuff like that. Um... James Wan also did this other movie called, I think it's called The House of the Devil or The Devil's House. I don't know, but I definitely need to pick up a copy of that. I, I'm sorry, my eye is really itchy for some reason. It must be the dust in this room or some shit. Uh, but wow. Yep, that's that's the big stack that we've got recently of horror movies. I hope you found something new and interesting to check out. And I hope I've steered you clear of some really god-awful garbage that you just don't want to waste your time, money or uh, sanity on. <laughs> anyway, my friends, how many was that? Like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's uh, seven horror movies to check out and or avoid. Thanks for watching. Stay sick. And um, if anyone gives you shit, tell them to go fuck themselves.